On this episode of Locked On Lightning, Nick Perbix is back on a two-year deal. The Lightning end 2022 on a high note. We look towards 2023. All that more on the first episode of the year. But first, let's play that music. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I want to thank all of you for making us your first listen of the day. On today's episode of Locked On Lightning, we are discussing the two-year extension, or I guess, yeah, I guess two-year extension for Nick Pervix, uh, rightfully deserved that extension. We also talk about the Lightning's very strange pinball game that we saw on Saturday night, New Year's Eve against the Arizona Coyotes, and we look towards 2023. Uh, I want to start off the episode by once again, as always, thanking us here for your first listen once more because I can never stop thanking you guys for all your support, uh, what you've done uh, over the past three years. We're, we're approaching three years on this podcast, four seasons, actually going to be five. Um, and it, it's crazy to think about that. You know, we're pretty much almost, I, I would say almost halfway through the NHL season. And also I want to wish all of you a happy new year. And for all of you that celebrate the holidays, happy holidays. Um, so on this episode, why don't we talk about Nick Pervix? Uh, this broke uh, midway through today, a little earlier today. So Nick uh, signed a two year extension uh, with the Tampa Bay Lightning, of course, with an AAV of $1.125 million. Um, he is in his rookie season, 24 years old. Um, he is second um, in – well, he ranks tied, excuse me, for second uh, among rookie NHL defensemen in goals and 10th for scoring. So – Really to say, I, I I mean, let's let's backtrack. So if if you're just joining us for the first time and if you're wondering why, you know, why what is make what it makes Nick Pervix such a special player? Well, you gotta look back at the players that are no longer here. Now the Lightning uh lost two key defensemen uh to their core in the offseason due to free agency and the other just Salary constraints, Ryan McDonough traded away to make space in the cap. Uh, to Nashville, we get back Sam Myers. I mean, excuse me, Philippe Myers. And then the Lightning choose not to re-sign Jan Ruda, who is now with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, you know, either way you look at it, if you didn't like having Ruda, uh, if you thought that maybe McDonough was going to uh, – maybe fall off eventually and you know that was the right decision you know that's one thing but then when you lose two defensemen at the same time guys who have and if you've been a listener of this show i have been somewhat critical of jan ruto over the last couple of years and i think i've rightfully thrown those criticisms around um but that's neither here nor there really what the point is is that and i spoke about this at at one point during the regular during the beginning of the season is that Nick Pervix was going to have to basically, you know, when Zach Bogosian came back, he was going to have to force John Cooper's hand uh, in terms of keeping him in the lineup. And he has done more than a phenomenal job thus far this season. I don't think when you were looking at Nick Pervix on the roster, uh, that we thought, and, and we're not saying he's Cal McCarr, but we also don't need him to be Cal McCarr. Having said that, I don't think anybody would have expected uh, three goals, eight, uh, eight points, excuse me, through 29 games uh, with a plus minus of eight. So to 
and, and one of those is the game winning goal, by the way. So, so put that in perspective. Um, and, and really what he, and, and it's not all about scoring. It's the fact, and, and I've spoken about this on the podcast many times is that Herbix, his, really his ability off the puck, uh, as well as his ability to, to make plays in the corners and make key defensive plays and force turnovers uh, in the zone to alleviate some of the pressure that is given by the opposing team uh, cannot be overmeasured and understated. I mean, he has done a phenomenal job. Hands down, I think one of our best def- defensemen this year. Um, you know, you could make the case that him and Sergachev are neck and neck. Uh, Hedman has had a little bit of a setback year, still, in my opinion, looking a little, I don't know, still a little bit somewhat restricted in his movement. Like we said on previous podcast that he's, he's really dealing with something there with, with the injury bug and, and maybe during the all-star break, we'll get some sort of, um, you know, maybe some sort of explanation or, or maybe some sort of, uh, you know, we'll see a difference once they come back uh, when he has that extended time off. Uh, but Nick Pervix, uh, getting, a, getting a two-year deal, that's huge for the Lightning, especially on this contract, especially on this money. Um, and, and it's such a big deal, too, because uh, drafted in 2017, six-round draft pick, 14th pick in that round, 169th overall. Um, yeah, like I said, I think, I don't think you would have thought that Nick Pervix would have been in this position. I don't think, and, 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 you know, you kind of saw that maturity early on and, and it was somewhat evident that, you know, we didn't think that he was going to make this big of an offensive, um, contribution to the lightning, but nonetheless, um really his defensive contributions i think really really outweigh uh his play um you know played college hockey uh at st cloud state if you don't know that's a very very good program um i firmly believe and i've said this with i i think we're starting to see a shift you know back in the day i feel like you know obviously the the hot thing to do for nhl teams uh and really what you saw was a lot of their top prospects um, out of junior hockey, out of high school, um, from overseas. And you're starting to see college hockey, or you have seen now, college hockey start to 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 catch up and start to be on that level. And I think that is very – and I spoke about it earlier on in the year that I really thought that having that extra experience, having to play in college, uh, that – was going to help him in terms of his maturity. You know, we're not talking about some 18, 19, 20 year old defenseman who uh, skipped out on college, maybe played a year or two in the minors and now is up, you know, even Cal McCarr still had to have some growing pains. Quinn Hughes still had to have some growing pains. I'm not saying Nick Pervix is the next Cal McCarr or Quinn Hughes. I'm just saying even the guys who are highly touted uh, coming into the league, uh, those were the guys, you know, they, they, they came in and they, they kind of had to learn a little bit on the fly, uh, where, and, and, you know, adjust over time where Nick, um, has seemed as almost as his, he's been able to slide into that role. Uh, like I said before, making the big plays and, and really that is what has helped the lightning, um, at times, um, in, in big key situations and allowed them to, to ultimately win some games that really, you know, I think if Nick Pervix is not on the team, I, I don't think the Lightning win some of these games. Uh, this game against uh, against Arizona on a Saturday night, I thought, you know, and, and he also makes players around him very good because, you know, I, I think it helps a lot of people on the ice when you have someone who has proven that they are solid on the defensive side of things and also can contribute if need be offensively. Uh, I think that alleviates a lot of, you know, somewhat of the tension, especially in a game like this that we saw on Saturday, which was just 
a very strange game, and, and we'll get into that into the second segment. But first, I want to remind everybody that this episode of Locked on Lightning is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Now, I love Athletic Greens uh, because it is great for all walks of life, whether you're eating paleo, vegan, gluten-free, whatever, uh, any any of those new new you know diets that you want to get on to in 2023 to get you know fit and, and in shape well athletic greens is good for good for you and better for you because especially if you're having trouble sleeping like i do uh it supports better sleep quality and recover support mental clarity and alertness and it's the one thing with the best things it's the athletic greens uses best the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing so right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day that's it i do that every single morning no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health so to make it easy right now athletic greens is going to give you for a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So once again, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We are also available on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, hit that thumbs up button, hit that notification bell, and drop a comment below. So let us know how we're doing. Let us know how you feel about the Lightning uh, just for 2023. We spoke about it on the last episode. Uh, some of my, I guess, my 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 2023 goals or wishes uh, for this team in the new year. And one of them, or predictions, I mean, whichever word you want to slap on them, I think can apply to, to any i think that the lightning are good enough and maybe some of you might think this is a little bit of recency bias but you know i always talk about the lightning playing a certain way playing a certain way that is not only going to win them hockey games but is only going to be is is also going to be su sustainable going forward you know if if you're dropping seven goals and in one night, you know, the chances of you repeating that is really not going to be, it, it, it's, it's not something that you can replicate. I mean, there is very few combinations uh, that you could slap out there of players in the NHL where you can put them together and they could drop seven goals um, on a nightly basis. Uh, the lightning, what they do is, and when they win games, this is really what wins them games. I mean, they will have their nights where they go crazy offensively. But at the same time, you know, that's like I said, that's not something that's sustainable. What we've seen in previous games against the Rangers, against Montreal, even against in some losses against Toronto and Detroit, we've seen that style of play that has really helped them uh have or have the potential for long-term success so that is really something you like but in this game against uh arizona i i can safely say that i i, I think pretty early on um the the style of play really didn't matter really right then and there because in this game it, it was pretty wild i from the opening goal you kind of figure and you know if you watch a lot of hockey games such as i do and you know the Sometimes the 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 opening goal can tell a lot about how a game is going to go, and and this was just a very strange game in which the the puck at times almost ref, it almost seemed like it refused to stay on the ice, and and we saw that in this one. I think out of the the eight goals that were scored, maybe three of them were like actual normal goals scored. Uh, I'd probably say the. The Sergachev, Stamkos, and well, okay, so the four, well, a couple of them towards the end, but the, those first, those first three in that first period were just it, it, it was like I said, it, it felt like the puck at times was just refusing to stay on the ice, 
Uh, but things as the game went along started to slow down, I think, uh, or started to kind of normal itself out. Um, the thing that worried me in this game, especially, was the once once Travis Boyd scored on that weird bounce uh, past Vasilevsky to get the Coyotes on the board. I really thought that we were going to see a night from Vasilevsky where he just almost seemed in that moment and and at times certain you know the first couple of goals he gave up. It almost seemed as though that he was his timing was off um you know oftentimes we only really see that where you know the puck is being bounced around through traffic and 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 i kind of felt that as well but i mean also part of that had to do with the fact that the puck was just coming weird off off everybody's stick that night and and, you know that's not really anything that you could really consistently replicate i mean if if you want to see how weird this game was look at Braden points goal uh just almost somewhat juggled it um it, it i guess it it would be like somewhat the hockey equivalent or the basketball equivalent of kind of like a lob off the backboard to yourself before dunking uh that that might not be a good analogy but that's probably that, that's just, that's the thing that comes uh to mind to, at me in the moment uh steven stamkos power play goal what else is new he's at 498 now in his career it would have been kind of cool to see him score uh, a hat trick uh, to get to 500 before the new year. That would have been a kind of a cool storyline to see there, but but no, you know, no worry there because you, I, I if, if I had to bet money, I, I would bet that probably he's gonna he's gonna get to 500 uh, within you know if not in this two game span against Minnesota and Chicago, I would say probably at least by the weekend. Um, so we'll definitely have to keep a, an eye out for that. But uh, this was a good game. This was a game where I've spoken about this numerous times with numerous other teams that the Lightning have played that there will be moments where the the team that you're playing against or the team that the Lightning is playing against where they're not a good team. Uh, the record, we spoke about it on the preview episode for the Coyotes. They're not a good team. They're they're pretty much on a, on a nightly basis at the bottom of the barrel of the, the Western Conference and the NHL. Uh, at the same time, um, I also warned that they were a team that has, you know, some pieces here and there throughout their their roster to be feisty, to, 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 to do certain things at certain points in the game and really take it to you. And if, if, you're, if you're not prepared, um, then, you know, you could be in for a long night and, and, the the lightning stuck with it uh i fully you know i was a little worried in the beginning when they were up when they were up to nothing i was like oh my goodness here we go again you know here's here we see kind of the classic story of the 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 lightning playing a a very low team in terms of uh performance and they're kind of playing down to it or not taking them seriously which i i didn't really think that the Lightning didn't take the Coyotes seriously. Like I said, this was just a very strange game. Uh, we mm-hmm. often like to use the phrase, you know, the ice tipping in another team's favor or whatever. I I just felt like instead of that, it was almost like the ice, instead of tipping in one team's favor, they were just trampoline jumping from side to side. And, and that's really what it was. And really what the Lightning did that was very good was that they just kept playing. They didn't try to, they didn't get frustrated. Uh, they, they just continued to play the right way and their talent in the end won them the game. So, you know, very good game uh, from them was really happy to see them uh, execute very well on the power play two out of three. Uh, glad to see that the shoe was on the foot on the other foot for once. You know, we've, we've talked about, it, I've talked about it immensely. And at this point I'm, I, I'm, pretty much done trying to to get trying to get myself mad about it because it's at this point it's just like you almost one has to laugh in terms of the the amount of games that we've seen this year and over the past uh three seasons uh in which really the lightning are very much get a lack there of of calls their way you know there's games where the lightning will get one penalty, one power play. And then there's other games I I remember. I don't remember exactly who they played. But I know for a fact there's been a few games here and there where the Lightning have actually 
not had a penalty or a power play called uh, at any point in those games. So, you know, glad to see that the Coyotes are the, on the other end of that. The Lightning, you know, they had their opportunities. They executed. They dominated the the puck possession, as you could see in the face-off percentage. Uh, the hits were pretty much the same in this game. Um, so, you know, like I said, a very good game played by the Lightning. Vasilevsky, like I said, was a little – seemed to me his timing was a little bit off. Uh, but but lassoed this game in and played well and and you know now now it's time for the lightning to to take that win take take the lat what we've seen you know sweeping those last three games of the season like I fully expected them to uh, to take that momentum with them and, and bring it into 2023 tomorrow night uh, against Chicago and then the following night against Minnesota. So wrapping things up on the show, like I said, very happy that the Lightning finished 2022 with the sweep. Fully expected them to. Uh, I, I think that really at the end of the day, uh, the numbers speak for themselves. You know, I, I try not to rely too heavily on the numbers, but third win in a row, seventh straight win at home. Uh, the Lightning are pretty much kings at home this season. If you know, if you're curious. 15 4 and 1 at home and then just 8 7 and 0 oh, on the road. So, you know, not too bad. I'm perfectly fine with those numbers. 8 and 2 in their last 10. Uh goal differential of plus 24. Um so I I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. Their points percentage is 0.671 on the season. So, you know, by all good accounts, um, you know, a good Good end to the year, uh, at least, you know, first part of the season. You know, I know we're we're not even halfway, really in terms of numbers. You know, we're not up to the – we're still a few handful of games away from the 41 ga game mark before we're officially halfway through the season. But I kind of look at the holidays and New Year. Uh, it's kind of – and if you've been a listener of this show and you listen to Locked on NHL on Thursdays, you, you kind of already know this about me, that I look at uh, – the holidays, Christmas and New Year, as kind of the the measuring stick for your team, and, and I look at the Tampa Bay Lightning as a very good team. Um, I look at them as a team that continues to get better on a nightly basis, win or lose. I look at them as a team that, in the coming weeks, I fully expect them. I kind of hinted at this on last episode or the one prior that I think that getting to within arm's reach, which if you depends on what you consider arm's reach, uh, depending on, on, on how I feel, I, I feel like that Toronto, the way they've been playing all season, cause they've been playing very well. I look at three points as arm reach. Uh, I'm not even thinking about Boston right now because Boston is just playing on another level than everybody else. I consider them the best team in the NHL right now um, by far. Uh, you, and then, you know, if you're ranking the top three teams, at least in, you know, the NHL, it's Boston, Carolina, and Toronto. You know, the numbers speak for themselves. And if if Tampa could get to Toronto – in points, like I said, arms reach for me is three points. I think that you're in a pretty good spot. You know, if you're chasing Toronto like that, if you're, if on every other night you're going back and forth in that second place spot in the division, I think for Tampa Bay going forward in 2023, especially in this month of January, where I've spoken a little bit before. Uh, about this, uh, considering the strength of the schedule, I think that's going to be a good problem to have. Now, in terms of the strength of the schedule, you look at at least this first week of January, you got Chicago and Minnesota on a back-to-back -back, um, on a little bit of this abbreviated wet, uh, Midwestern trip. Uh, the Lightning, definitely at least these first two games, very winnable games. Um, Chicago, I kind of look at them as a team that's, a little bit overachieving right now. They're, you know, they they kind of started the season a little bit on the low end in terms of expectations and where they want it to be. Now, granted, they only have 20 points 
on the season. I I still think whenever you're playing against um, Patrick Kane and company and some of the players that are still left on this team, um, I still think that you still have to be wary, uh, regardless if, if you're looking at the points that they have accumulated or their goal differential, which is quite honestly brutal at this point in time. It's it's minus 58. Uh, the only team that has a worse goal differential than that is the Anaheim Ducks, who have a minus 67. Um, after that, the Lightning will go to Minnesota, who is, uh, if you're looking at points once again, the third best team in the Central Division out in the West. They're a team, and, and there's certain other teams in the NHL that I kind of look at it this way. I, I look at Florida. I, I, I look at, really, I guess Florida would be the best comparison. Minnesota's not a team that scares me because, you know, they, they're a decent regular season team. And even then, you know, that's a stretch for them given, you know, somewhat of their experience, somewhat of their, their performances over the last couple of years. But really, they're a team that, at least in my eyes, from what I've seen now, I haven't really watched them this year, but going off of their roster and, you know, knowing what I know about some of these players, I, I, that's not a game that particularly scares me. Now, obviously, you could have yourself a situation in which we saw. And, and, you know, I'll make a prediction right now. I think we'll see somewhat of a similar game that we saw against Arizona on Saturday. We'll see that out of that Minnesota game. Um, and and we'll, we'll discuss that on Wednesday as we, we recap the, the Blackhawks game as well as discuss uh, previewing that Minnesota game. Um and then after that, going to be a very interesting game. The game that definitely piques my interest is against the Winnipeg Jets uh, later this week on Friday. Now, that is going to be a game that I think a lot of Lightning fans, as well as a lot of hockey fans, are going to be looking at because this could quite if, – if the Stars align, no pun intended because the Dallas Stars are first in the Central Division ahead of Winnipeg, I think that this is a matchup that we could potentially see. Like I said, I think that Tampa Bay not only has a team that could at least make a play for the number one spot. I, don't, I mean, really at that, this you're going to have to kind of rely on Boston to kind of just falter a little bit, which I can't see them picking up, keeping up this pace all year. But this is a matchup that we could see in the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Jets and, 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 and Lightning. And that would be, I think, the first real, you know, if you're looking at the past um, three Stanley Cup final, you know, you look at the opposing goaltenders and, you know, maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but it's always fun to think about these things. You look at the last three Stanley Cup finals, Dallas, Anton Kadobin, Montreal, Carey Price. Um, and he played spectacular in that series, uh, Corey Perry. And, and you know, Kadobin did – he wasn't what he was when he was helping that team get to the Stanley Cup final. Um, and then you have last year um, – for life of me, I'm drawing a blank. It was it wasn't your give, but um, Darcy Kemper. There we go, Darcy Kemper. I think we could all agree if if Tampa plays Winnipeg, this is in the Stanley Cup Final, Hellebuck versus Vasilevsky, especially if both those guys are on their game. That that's going to be a great series. Um, those are the kind of series that I would love. I you know I you never want to root or you never want to to root to see your opponent, or you never want to wish for an opponent in the Stanley Cup playoffs. But if the Lightning make it back to the Stanley Cup final, I out of the West, I 100% want Winnipeg. And maybe I'll eat my words later on, but I, I would really love to see that, all things considered, since, you know, Vazzy uh, lost out on a Vezina trophy to Hellebuck uh, a couple of years back. So that would be kind of cool to see uh, that that kind of that matchup face-to-face and hopefully uh hellebuck plays on friday as well as vasileski which i would expect you know if i had to bet money i would expect that vazzy's playing tomorrow night against chicago and then we're gonna get 
we're going to get Brian Elliott on Wednesday against Minnesota. So that'd be a cool matchup. Um, and, and, you know, regardless, I think Elliott's going to go out there and play well against Minnesota. So uh, join us tomorrow. We'll be doing a preview episode uh, against for the game uh, against Chicago. And then join us back on Wednesday uh, as we recap that game as well as preview the matchup against Minnesota. So in the meantime, that's been it for this episode of Locked on Lightning, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you next.